Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. And according to the Financial Times, there are some tough times ahead for some homeowners here in Spain. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. And thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, some tough times ahead for some homeowners here in Spain, according to the Financial Times. As we can read here, the wolf is coming. Rising rates push Spain's homeowners to the brink. Isabel Benito's four-bedroom chalet in Colmenar Viejo, an airy town with views of the mountains north of Madrid, is not the archetypal home of family living on the edge, but the bank documents and scribbled notes she keeps in a bulging shopping bag in her living room are testament to the financial strain she is under. Benito, 56, is worried that the payments on her variable rate mortgage, the typical contract for most Spanish homeowners, could soon jump from 902 euros a month to over 1300 euros a month. There's fear of losing your home, fear of losing what you have paid for so far and all the sacrifices you have made, she says. A lot of fear and a lot of sadness. Her angst is shared by millions across the Eurozone who are reckoning with a series of aggressive rate hikes by the European Central Bank in response to rampant inflation. For households, the impact of monetary tightening on their mortgages comes as energy and food prices devour an expanding share of their budgets. So, according to the Financial times the wolf is coming for a lot of homeowners here in Spain, especially people that have variable rate mortgages. And as we also saw in that article, variable mortgages are the most typical type of mortgage in this country. So we'll see what the Spanish government can do about this problem. Now keeping on the subject of banks here in Spain, we all know that recently the Spanish government approved the new tax on banks, but according to the European Central Bank, it might not be the best idea. Because as we can see here, the European Central Bank believes that the Spanish banking tax may be detrimental to the sector and calls for it to be passed on to customers. According to the European Central Bank, the new measure could jeopardize the smooth transmission of monetary policy measures to the the economy as a whole if the institutions concerned record low profits or losses at the time the tax is actually levied, the amount of which may not be proportionate to the profitability of a credit institution. The opinion criticizes the new tax, which will levy a 4.8% tax on bank commissions and a 1.2% tax on energy companies' revenues and will affect financial institutions with annual revenues of more than 800 million euros and energy companies with annual revenues of more than 1 billion euros. So an interesting story there, the European Central Bank criticizing the new tax that the Spanish government is slapping on banks, saying that it will be detrimental to the sector and asking for it to be passed on to customers, which is something that the Spanish government has said will not happen. And again, showing that banks here in Spain and in the European Union are a protected species. Now, if you're flying into Spain today or out of Spain from either Catalonia or the Balearic Islands, there might be some delays. Because an uncontrolled Control Chinese rocket has caused the closure of airports in Catalonia and the Balearic Islands and problems for Spanish air traffic. The uncontrolled re-entry of a Chinese rocket into the atmosphere is affecting Spanish air traffic on Friday. According to Eurocontrol forecasts, its trajectory was to fly over Spanish airspace for an hour. Air traffic controllers announced at 8 o'clock this morning on their official Twitter account that rate zero has been established for certain areas of Spanish airspace and this may affect air traffic in the form of delays on the ground and in-flight route diversions. So an uncontrolled Chinese rocket, I'll say it again, an uncontrolled controlled Chinese rocket flying over Spain this morning. And the question needs to be asked, what the heck are the Chinese doing? Now, there was a large demonstration in Madrid yesterday afternoon. The unions here in Spain managed to get 50,000 people, apparently, onto the streets of the capital, and they were chanting, let's see if Garamendi, the head of the business lobby here in Spain, understands either wages or conflict. Around 50,000 people gathered in Madrid's Plaza Mayor on Thursday, organized by the UGT and CCOO trade unions, in what was the largest rally in the wage or conflict campaign that the unions have been organizing to force the employers to sit down and negotiate a wage increase. Thousands of trade union representatives from all over the country took part in the march, which ended up in one of the most emblematic places in the capital at around midday after setting off from three different 
different points in the city an hour and a half earlier, awaiting the arrival of the general secretaries of both unions. So wages or conflict, the slogan that the trade unions in this country have come up with to try to force employers to increase wages due to high inflation. And 50,000 union representatives taking the day off yesterday to try to get their point across. Now Spain's neighbour to the west, Portugal, is making headlines here today because Portugal is going to trial a four-day working week without pay cuts. The Portuguese government wants to test the four-day working week in both the public and private sectors. While the former will offer no resistance to the experiment, the latter is far from welcoming the initiative with enthusiasm. Major business organisations see it as ill-timed at best and a smokescreen at worst. After the effects of the coronavirus on businesses and families, after the brutal effects of the war on raw materials, supply chains and energy costs, I would say that the country has other problems that the government should worry about, said Antonio Saraiva, president of the Portuguese Business Confederation, according to newspaper Publico. For João Vieira de López, president of the Portuguese Confederation of Commerce and Services, it is an initiative that cannot be applied across the board in the short term. So a four-day working week about to be trialled in Portugal, and we'll see how far Spain is away from trialling something similar. And could a four-day working week be the solution to Spain's productivity problems? I don't know. Time will tell. Now Spain's controversial transsexual law continues to make headlines here, and political party Podemos and 10 other parliamentary groups want to eliminate a person's sex from the DNI or passport. The trans law continues to be the focus of conflict within the government. Pedro Sanchez's partners in the legislature now want to remove the sex from the DNI and passport. Unidas Podemos, ERC, EH Bildu, Junts, BNG, Pedicat, PNV, Mas País, Compromis, and Coalición Canaria have presented a battery of joint amendments to the trans law in collaboration with the Trans People's Collective, and the modifications include the possibility of omitting the mention of sex in official documents. The proposal wants to change the current text of the bill so that administrative documentation and forms include non-binary people and to articulate measures that allow the omission at the request of the person concerned of the mention of sex in their official documents. So the new trans law here in Spain continues to divide the coalition government. Podemos has put their version of the new law down on the table, but apparently the PSOE side of the government wants to water it down. So some interesting times ahead when it comes to this new law. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Angela. Hello Stuart, being retired when we moved here 20 years ago, we always ate our meals in UK times. It's never been a problem for us. We do notice the daylight saving hours cause a little disruption for a week or two. We feel it's better to eat before eight in the evening so as to digest before bedtime. We've wondered how the working Spanish people manage such long days. Great to get your updates on living in Spain. Keep it up and thank you. Angela, thanks for the comment and glad you like the regular updates that I put out on this channel. This is a topic that popped up on yesterday's live stream about how a lot of people here in Spain suffer sleep disorders and are turning to pills to help them sleep. And anyone who's come from another country to live here in Spain will know that the timetables that the Spanish keep are very difficult to get used to. And I've come to the conclusion that a lot of Spaniards, especially in big cities, are permanently sleep deprived. But hey, I guess that a lot of people in this country are not really morning people. They prefer the afternoons, evenings and nights. And sleep for a lot of people seems to be something that they are obliged to do, not necessarily something that they want to do because they want to cram as many activities into their day as they can. One here from Vanessa. I'm from Birmingham and it's not full of drunken people Friday and Saturday nights. I am quite happy to walk through the city streets. The comments from this person are not correct. He or she knows nothing about Birmingham. Yeah, Vanessa, thanks for the comment and sorry to see that you were upset by another person's comment in which he or she mentioned Birmingham. We saw in an article earlier in the week that the British Foreign Office is warning people that there could be problems here in Spain, civil unrest and violence because of various demonstrations that have been taking place around the country. And the person said in that comment that in their opinion Spain is a safe country and that cities like Birmingham in the UK at the weekends are more dangerous because of the amount of drunk people roaming the streets. So thanks for clearing that up and saying that Birmingham is not a dangerous city at all. 
one here from Ed McF1. Rent limits controls have been called by an economist the surest way to destroy a city short of strategic bombing. As landlords end up unable to afford repairs and tenants have no right or reason to make them, and you don't get new landlords coming into the market. Keeping rents low also incentivizes use of Airbnb type arrangements as the risk is much lower. Yeah, thanks for the comment, and this is something that we have been speaking about quite a lot on the channel this week. Rent prices here in Spain, the increasing rent prices in a lot of Spanish cities, and people are complaining that they now have to pay more than 30% of their wages on rent. The coalition government, especially the Podemos side of the coalition government, is talking about rent controls, but the PSOE side of the government or the socialist side of the government is a little bit reticent when it comes to rent controls because there are some very important lobby groups that own a lot of rental properties in this country and no doubt they are pressuring the government. In the past, Spain did have strict rent controls and all of the things that you mentioned in your comment happened. Many buildings in cities like Madrid fell into disrepair because landlords, as you mentioned in your comment, didn't want to pay for repairs to those apartments. And there's also not a lot of incentives for new landlords, as you also mentioned, to come into the market. So we'll see what happens with this issue in coming weeks and months and which side of the government gets their way. And finally, one here from Lynn, the BBC can't sort itself, let alone anyone else. Their journalists aren't very thorough at the best of times. The reputation of the BBC is at its lowest here in the UK. People are now refusing to pay the license. Yeah, Lynn, thanks for the comment. And there has been a lot of anti-BBC sentiment left in the comment section on this channel in recent times. I mentioned the BBC the other day because of a documentary that they recently released that questions the Spanish and Moroccan version of events in a migrant crisis that took place in June at the Moroccan and Spanish border down there in the north of Africa. And if I had a dollar for every comment that I read from people saying don't trust the BBC, I'd be rich. So whatever your opinion on the BBC is, that's fine. But in my opinion, they make a damn good documentary. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.